Let's do another test with this redesigned mold system. So this here is my mold system. Basically, it lets you take a profile of your pot and automatically creates all of the 3D models that you can print to make a plaster mold for slip casting. Basically, how do you make one of these? All these components here get assembled that lets us pour plaster, which then lets us slip cast pots. I just started experimenting with removing all of these bolts and the corresponding threaded inserts as well as the gasket, basically simplifying the attachment process. That uses these here, basically a bunch of binder clips. I then added a bunch of specific geometry to the flanges. Before these had a space for the gasket and the holes for the threaded inserts. Now they have a bunch of grooves and a bunch of ridges that interlocked. And the idea is that we basically make the path longer and more difficult for the plaster to come out. In the previous video that worked, all the binder clips added enough clamping force to hold everything together nice and tightly. We had a small leak in the corner. And I want to address that in this video. And we also had some issues with the 3D print at the top flaring out. And I was curious if that was always going to be the case or if it was a particular feature of this particular mold. Hi, I'm Kent. In this video, I want to do another test with this new mold system and the grooves and ridges. So there's a small gap here. And I put on the binder clips and did squeeze it together. However, I was curious if it was flaring out because this is a very tall mold or if there's something that I need to do to change geometry to help with the flares. Do I need to have some geometry here that kind of lofts out from the flange onto the body of the outer mold so that it stays more secure? So I went ahead and designed a new form. I actually have been wanting a smaller bowl form. And I printed out these here. So here's the outer mold. I have the inner mold that represents the bowl form that's been scaled up to account for my clay shrinkage and it has the slip well added and the bottom ring. In the last test, I went ahead and made this a solid piece instead of two pieces. And this one I had to make it two because it's too big for my print bed. So I'll need to glue this together. It still has all of the ridges and in here there are the corresponding grooves as well. This will interlock together. So this is basically all the same as in the previous video, just a different form. And then the outer mold is the thing that we're interested in in terms of changes. So the first is if there is that gap that opened up on the other mold. And the answer seems to be yes, but only a little bit. So put some binder clips on. So we can see at the top, there is a little bit of a gap here, but I think they'll close up nicely. So I'm reluctant to change the geometry of the flanges, mostly because that makes them much more complicated and I'm already having challenges getting them modeled in the software automatically already. My suspicion, which I think this basically confirms, is that basically the higher we get on the print, the less supported it is, the more things can move. There's also a cooling gradient that happens as we print. Basically, the bottom will cool off and the top will still be warm. There's also a different amount of mass here between the flanges and then the body of the print. The body is relatively thin, so it prints as fast as we can get. The flanges need some extra weight to them so that we can model in the grooves as well as have some strength to clamp things together. So that's the first lesson. I don't think I need to modify these yet. If other people are having problems, I'll have to reconsider that. Speaking of, several people were curious about the version I made in the previous video and reached out and I gave them the 3D model files. And I've seen some pictures coming back of those being printed and more or less they look the same. So that is good to confirm that people can do this with different processes all using FDM printers, but different slicers and different printers. And that's really one of the goals of Shapecast. I want this to be able to be usable by everyone, not having to do things specific to just my printer. So the one change I did make to the model, they have these grooves and ridges expanding all the way to the bottom. They don't quite line up perfectly. I don't think I'll be able to do that just the way these are created. So on the previous version I tested, they basically stopped short. This piece here at the bottom is modeled separately and just the order of operations, I wasn't able to get them down all the way. So on this new version, I changed that so they go all the way down and then across the bottom and then across the top. So my hope is that by not having that flat part here anymore, that won't be a path for the plaster to leak. There are a whole bunch of comments on the previous video and people suggested different types of sealant from beeswax to petroleum jelly. I have used those in the past with very early tests of Shapecast. The problem with clay is that it's very easy to build up and, and really you only need a very thin layer. Petroleum jelly works okay as well, but then it's kind of sticky and goopy afterwards. And if I can just use the print straight off the printer, so much the better. I really want to make this as easy as possible with as few steps as possible. And we had a good test last time. I don't think it was really leaking because of the new ridges and grooves. I think it was some of these specific geometry features. One other thing I played around a little bit with, and some of the people who have reached out and have been testing as well, is printing this with and without brims. So I had a print failure on my previous one, and I think that was actually due to its location on the print bed. I printed two of these at the same time, so I had to push one all the way to the corner and actually had it lift up a little bit. 
I think that lifting was basically due to the print bed not being as warm as the rest of it in that corner, and that's what caused the failure. I printed two at the same time, and the other one came out just perfect, so I don't think that's the issue. However, I did then did a follow-up and printed with brims, and those were really annoying. Like it held the print down, but removing them was really a pain in the rear. So most printers have a brim feature where you can do outer versus inner brims, one or, one or the other or both. And so I selected outer brims. The problem with outer brims is that these grooves here actually connect to the outside world. So it'll actually put a brim around this one piece here and then around each of the little protrusions for the grooves as well. So the area in between winds up getting filled in with the brim and that's really annoying. I think maybe if I put a little piece here in the model that could be cut away, that would enclose the ends, that might work. However, I think that might be a little bit tricky to get to work on everyone's printer. If print bed adhesion winds up being a problem for others that are testing out, then I might revisit that. But otherwise, hopefully it'll work without brooms. Those are all the changes. Let's go ahead and assemble this new mold and we can try out the plaster. All right, off camera, I went ahead and see I glued this together, basically using this and some activator. I tried to keep it off the ridges, although it's building up a little bit and I put some on the back. It's a little bit harder here. I think maybe I want some thinner CA glue. However, hopefully this is good enough. So now we can start assembling the mold. Start with the inner mold. Yeah, it feels like it fits just fine. Go ahead and put binder clips on the seam. Make sure that's held down well. And the reason the ring is separate from the inner mold here is that basically this needs to come out. And with all of the surface area, it's actually relatively difficult. Even with just the inner mold, sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Definitely need the frozen alcohol and water trick to make it come out, which I'll show in a few minutes. And one of the hard things about making this mold system is basically we need the 3D print to play together with the plaster, to play together with the slip. It's hard to, we really can't optimize for just one. We need to make sure that they're all working together. All right, there's the inner mold, looks good. So for the outer mold, I wanna go ahead and make sure that the seams offset by you know 90 degrees-ish. attach this together so it's aligned and then definitely want binder clips next to the seam to hold things together all right and finish putting those on Someone had suggested taking all these little tabs here and making them flat, basically bending them over. I thought about that too. I don't think it matters so much. There isn't that much pressure and it's basically being distributed across all of them. There we go, all together. I think now we're ready for plaster. All right, put down some old boards in case I spill. And I went ahead and measured out the plaster and the water. So just like the regular version of Shapecast, this models the plaster that we're going to be creating and then gives you measurements for the dry and the wet. So I'm gonna take the dry and put it onto wet. I'll let it slake for three and a half minutes and mix for four and then we'll pour it in. And I've been using this here, a, a sifter. That way I can take the plaster and put it very slowly onto the water. Otherwise I'm prone to just dumping it in and that's not the best thing for the plaster. Since doing this, my plaster quality has definitely improved, which is great. This bucket's really too wide for this little plaster. It's hard to not get bubbles in it. Right, go ahead and pour it in. There we go. Almost 
to the top there. Have plenty of plaster. And I don't see any leaks out of the corners. Chip brush here. Let's make sure there's no bubbles stuck at the top. All right, I'll go ahead and let this set up and then we will demold it. This is almost ready to demold. And I still don't see any leaks. There's a little bit of water over here. This is very much an alpha version of the software. I basically have done a complete rewrite relative to what's on the Shapecast webpage. I'm switching over technologies and the hope was to go ahead and use 3D modeling software the whole way through. Right now it's a combination of some 2D software and some 3D software. And the other idea is to switch over from using meshes or triangles, which generates the STL files into something that uses solid geometry. Unfortunately, I'm having several problems with this solid geometry. A few I've worked around and a few I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to. As one example, to attach these flanges, we basically want to be able to glue them on. So digitally model them and connect them to the outer wall. Unfortunately, the way the software works, there can be small little numerical errors, basically fractions of a number. That means it's slightly separated apart. And when that happens, it fails. So it means I have to go through and basically pick which face I want to attach and extend it by a little bit and then do the merge, the union together. Likewise for the cut. So for instance, to cut this hole, I can't have it exactly flush. It needs to protrude a little bit to the cutting tool so it actually cuts all the way through. Otherwise, sometimes there's a surface here that winds up messing up the geometry. Similarly, I basically need to go from, say, the bottom here to the top and kind of make that all loft together. And depending upon the features, if there's not the same number of points around, basically this is a Bezier curve, so there's not the same number of points, that winds up failing. So this might have a lot, and this has a few, and then it doesn't know how to create all of the surfaces. I've worked around both of those so far. They're kind of annoying because they're kind of spread throughout the entire software, or at least the new prototype of it. The one that I don't think I'm going to be able to work around has to do with doing the offsets. So we start with the pot, and then we need the outer wall for the inner mold, and then we need the outer wall of the plaster, and then we need the outer wall for the outer mold, and we need the outer flange. Each of those is basically doing an offset from the geometry, and the problem is features like this. This winds up being slightly concave, and in certain conditions, the offsetting will wind up being self-intersecting. There are some specific algorithms to do with this, and actually the version of Shapecast that's working with 2D manipulations has that algorithm in it, but apparently this 3D modeling software does not. So that means that basically when I do these offsets for some certain geometries, it just winds up failing. And since I don't know the underlying geometry, since I'm basically taking kind of an arbitrary pop form, that's problematic. All that is to say, basically, it's gonna take me a while before this is available on the Shapecast website. I basically need to go ahead and work out all these bugs and then do a whole bunch of tests to make sure it doesn't fail because I don't wanna have any regressions. And only then will I be able to replace it. I keep think I'm getting close and then I keep running into these types of problems. So we'll see. All right, so I think our plaster is good now. So let's go ahead and demold it. Okay, so first thing, I just pulled out my mixture of isopropyl alcohol and water from the freezer. So this gets nice and cold and stays liquid at freezer temperatures. We'll use this to shrink the inner mold. For the outer mold, well, first we can check, see if there's any leaks. And the answer is no. So it seems the change geometry in these corners is a good thing. Let's take off all the binder clips. Say, I don't mind the bolts inside of inserts, but that's way faster. It came off no problem. Before I was concerned about the plaster sticking, but it's not an issue. Just basically wash it off, no problem. So this here is the top of our mold, and it looks like we have a good seam. I don't see any plaster that leaked through the ridges. We have a little bit here on this side, mostly on the edges where I see it glued it together. the outer mold. A little bit of flash in between, but really minor. And same thing. We basically maybe made it into the first ridge, just maybe to the second one. No problem. This one leaked a little bit more, but it didn't actually come out. So I think this geometry here is actually working great. And extending this all the way to the bottom, that solved the problem of it leaking in the corners. There's always this little bit of a lip here from pouring the plaster. Sometimes it's too full, sometimes it's not full enough. However, that's the bottom of the mold, so no big deal. It's all cleaned up. We basically just want it to sit flat. Let me 
make sure there's any plaster that leaked over onto the mold. I don't think there is. So now I take the water and isopropyl alcohol mixture. Pour it in all the way up to the top. And this is cold, so basically it's making the PLA cold, which will get it to shrink a little bit. And usually after just a few seconds, like that, it'll let go. There we go. And I got a container here to dump it in. And there we go, there is our mold. So there's usually a little bit of a lip here where the ring and the walls meet. So again, take the knife and just do a quick clean up there. All right, just like that. All right, let me clean this up and we'll take a closer look. And here we go. I spent a couple minutes and just used some water and washed off the excess plaster. Came off pretty easy. No problems. And the mold looks great. This is really good. It really is amazing how easy these have become using Shapecast, or in this case, the prototype for Shapecast. I remember maybe two years ago, making molds was one of my least favorite things to do. And now, no problem. The other thing that's been interesting is that the outer side of the mold is actually really smooth now. I mentioned the current version of Shapecast is actually using meshes and because those takes up a lot of space, the outer one is actually a relatively low resolution mesh. So here is basically the same bowl form, only slightly larger. That's the one I've been working on this video and it has all this faceting on the outside and that's basically just to reduce the number of triangles needed and therefore the file sizes as well. However, because this is using solid geometry, the triangles wind up being tiny and we wind up with this nice, smooth outer mold as well. Again, this is totally non-functional, so it doesn't really matter, but it's been an unexpected benefit. So I think these additions to the grooves and ridges have definitely been worthwhile. And as I mentioned, the changes to the flange, I don't think are needed right now. I'll probably need to do some more tests to really see if they wind up being an issue, but so far this is actually looking really, really promising. Now I just need to get the software to catch up. However, that's proven to be more challenging than I had anticipated. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.